Now before we get this bottom part of the turbine completely glued up with silicone sealer, we're going to take a look at what's in the bottom section and see why there are the connections in there. If we take a look at the bottom of the turbo generator, we see that there are several fluid connections here. We've got two connections for oil, oil coming out and oil going in, and then the third connection is for uh, removing the water, condensing steam from the turbine section. We have a number of electrodes in here. These are connections for three separate coils in the stator of the turbo generator. So that's what's on the bottom. This is the external oil pump that goes with this, with this turbo generator. The customer who wanted this turbo generator wanted the oil pump located outside, so we've got a separate oil pumping tank and the oil pumps inside the tank. And it's got connections up on top for oil coming in and out of this unit. This is the hot rotor and permanent magnet assembly. And this is the previous design, or the original design, where we designed this as a rotating hub rather than a rotating axle. So this is, this is all one unit, a compact unit with the hot rotor and the permanent magnets all on one hub. In the new design, the hot rotor sits up on top of the, the axle up here, and it's a live axle. The permanent magnet rotor is on the other end of the live axle, and the bearings are in a hub. This would be your bearing hub. Those are in between the, the magnetic rotor and the hot rotor. Now, to see what's inside the bottom section, I'm going to just lift this up, set it aside. Okay, let me see the six wires coming down from the alternator stator. And you can see that they're color-coded, two blacks, two greens, two reds. Those are paired off for the three uh, coil sections. This is a three-phase system, and we've separated each of the coil sections. So you can work with the coils independently, or you can wire them any way you want on the outside to have all of them wired together in parallel and series or independently, depending on how you want the electrical signals to, to work for you. Okay, and here we see the bottom of the, of the stationary axle. This is your oil going up through the axle. Oil comes in through this connection through the bottom plate goes up this tubing, up through the center of the axle. The oil comes out on the top and then spills over into your bearings. Your top bearing goes here, and the bottom bearing's here. So the oil hits the top bearing, goes through the top bearing, down to the bottom bearing, 
goes through the bottom bearing down through this, this drain. And the oil accumulates down into the, this bottom section, goes out the center brass connector and to the oil pump, from the oil pump back up through here so you have a continuous loop on the oil. This copper tubing right here, quarter inch copper tubing, connects up to a fitting on the bottom brass fitting. Now this tubing is the drain for the condensing steam that's condensing off the edges of the hot rotor up in the very top section. And on this particular design this was really the only way to effectively remove any conden condensing steam. So we have this copper tubing coming up from the bottom. This tubing actually goes through this slot. There's your slot coming up through the plate. Comes up through that slot, connects with another copper tubing coming up. into the hot rotor section up here. There's another plate that goes up above the stator. And that's this plate. And this plate has I can show you how that plate fits in there. This plate up on top of the stator section. And you can see that any water that condenses off the edges of the, of the hot rotor, that water goes out into this, this section right here and goes out through three drains. See the three drains are located here, here, and here, and those are going to be connected with quarter-inch copper tubing that goes around the stator down into the bottom of this middle section and connects up with your copper tubing coming up through the slot. So that takes your your condensing water out of the system under vacuum. So that's as far as we've gotten with the assembly. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and use this high temperature silicone, ultra copper silicone to Fill this slot and glue down the cylinder. Glue the cylinder into this slot, dropping this in place, and then we'll clamp it together and let that cure, and then that section will be done.